Thank you for joining me here for the Daily Bread Bible Study. This is day 348 for Sunday, December 13th, 2020, focusing on the whole book of 1 Timothy, chapters 1 through 6. The book of Timothy, again, lacks scholarly consensus, and so the date and time is sometime after 60 AD, to the best of my knowledge. Um, you can, there's many different ways that you can assess this, um, but overall it's a book of wisdom and uh, encouragement there for uh, Timothy, who is this uh, disciple of Paul, in a lot of ways, one who has been bestowed and trusted in ministry to serve in you know, these various capacity to the congregations that uh, Paul is called to. So the pieces of wisdom that are most notable here, uh, I picked for us in 1 Timothy 4.14, do not neglect the gift that is in you, which is essentially the gift of the Holy Spirit manifesting itself to work for the sake of the church. The second is similar in chapter 6, verse 10, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. So it's this idea that the gift and the spirit provides you with enough and that you don't have to go pursuing uh, a love of money in order to uh, follow what God calls you to do. So in 1 Timothy chapter 1, the letter is the apostle Paul giving instructions to Timothy in the task of leadership specifically. And so the Apostle Paul is writing to Timothy, this church worker, this co-worker. Paul addresses the use of the love and the law within the community, asking that uh, love guide those made innocent in Christ. So in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8, Now we know that the law is good, and if one uses it legitimately. This means understanding that the law is laid down not for the um, innocent, but for the lawless and disobedient. Paul comments on those who have strayed from dependence upon Jesus and one who came to save sinners like Paul once was. Now in chapter 2, Paul then focuses on what is, quote, right and is acceptable in the sight of our Lord and sa our, our, of God our Savior. This involves praying that civil authorities would respect God and that all would be humbled with reverence for Jesus. Men are invited to act without anger or argument, and women are invited to dress modestly. And in many ways, these actions are repeats from their society and also previous pieces of scripture. Proverbs 31.30 comes to mind, which says, Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Proverbs 19 also says in verse 14, a prudent wife is from the Lord. So the Bible connects this adornment of women with immorality. Um, there's lots of times in the Old Testament where they make references to um, Israel falling away and serving other gods as similar to an immoral wife. And, uh, but in our day and time, this seems rather unfair to focus on women in this way. I think the writer takes it too far when he says in 1 Timothy 2, verse 11, Let a woman learn in silence with full submission. I permit no woman to teach or to have authority over a man. She is to be silent. They justify or supposedly justify this by talking about Adam sinning due to Eve. and um, But this also really misses the point. Adam should be held responsible for his own actions as well, too. He is equally guilty with Eve for disobeying the word of God. Though these words are biased, the function really is to keep the focus on serving Jesus. So as harsh and as uh, biased as these words are, I believe there is still some merit for us in our day and time. In uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, women are not the only ones held to high standards of actions. Bishops, who are, or what's translated from overseers, and deacons are also held to high standards as listed in chapter 3. I'm not going to go into that too much because they're kind of just lined out there. 
In chapter 4, uh, in regards to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons, Paul claims that marriage and abstinence from food are not forbidden. So, you can get married. You can eat food. This sounds again like a reference against the, quote, circumcision faction that showed up in Galatians. And instead, Paul declares in 1 Timothy 4, verse 4, For everything created by God is good, and nothing is to be rejected, provided it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by God's word and by prayer. Additionally, Paul calls Timothy to trust the gift of the Holy Spirit working through him as bestowed on by the elders of the church, saying in chapter 4, verse 14, Do not neglect the gift that is in you. My hope is that for you, for anybody who feels the call to serve God and God working through you, that you also do not neglect, neglect the gift of the Holy Spirit uh, just because I have been ordained as a pastor does not make me any better than any other individual. Um, it just means that I take a vow of commitment to the work of the church and to the principles and the standards that I've been called to. But each, each of us is called in baptism to follow God and called to you know, obey what God has um, called us to do through the Holy Spirit and how call, God calls all believers to act. So, the responsibilities of the call also come with the gift of the Holy Spirit and our ability to be able to do that. For Timothy, this looks like being able to support the growing churches. So in chapter 5, Paul then gives instructions about specific groups of people, including widows. This is in part to avoid how, in chapter 5, verse 15, quote, some have already turned away for, to follow Satan. Now, I presume this is when somebody uh, pursues their own interests and forgets the needs of others in the church. In similar words of sound device, in 1 Timothy 5, 22, uh, Paul encourages Timothy to do not participate in the sins of others, keep yourself pure. So it's pretty easy to get focused on the details or somebody else's conflict instead of living into um, what we know in our heart of hearts to be what God is calling us to do. So in 1 Timothy chapter 6, the last chapter for today, in regards to slavery, Paul actually encourages those who are enslaved to be faithful to their earthly masters. This sounds familiar to what has been said in other works of the Apostle Paul. Similarly, the Apostle tells Timothy to avoid the love of money, saying in 1 Timothy 6, 9, But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, and in their eagerness to be made rich, some have wandered away from the faith and have pierced themselves with many pains. So the idea is that loving money too much will essentially bring you pain. In his final advice, uh, in chapter 6, verse 20, he says, Paul says to Timothy, Guard what has been entrusted to you. Avoid the profane chatter and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. By professing it, some have missed the mark as regards to faith. Grace be with you. So may all of this wisdom and insight, may it be helpful. Will you, may you be able to live through the Holy Spirit, however the love of God manifests itself, and know that we are in this together as people connected in the body of Christ. So... Look forward to talking with you. We just have a few more days left in this Bible study year. And thank you and um, for joining me. And I look forward to finishing the, the whole year together.